Ian Dale. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. 9.33 on LBC. We'll come back to your calls on fireworks in just a moment. Uh, but as you've just heard, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has just been appointed the American Health Secretary. Well, let's talk to a man who cares deeply about his health, which presumably means he's going to be leaving the United States very soon. <laughs> Simon Marks. Simon, over to you. Well, thank you very much for that build-up, Ian. Uh, just to be clear, he's been nominated for this post of Secretary of Health and Human Services in Donald Trump's government, and he only will become the Secretary of Health and Human Services if he either is confirmed by the United States Senate, which I think will, like so many of the other uh, quite extraordinary appointments that we've witnessed coming from uh, Donald Trump's uh, Mar-a-Lago transition team will be a steep climb or he can be appointed to the role by uh, President-elect Trump uh, if uh, the Senate either agrees to a series of recess appointments or we wait until Donald Trump is sworn into the presidency and then he forces an adjournment uh, up on Capitol Hill. But this announcement came from Donald Trump over his own truth social uh, social media platform. He says he's thrilled to announce Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as the United States Secretary of Health and Human Services. And then comes this sentence, which sounds to me like it was absolutely dictated by RFK Jr. For too long, Americans have been crushed by the industrial food complex and drug companies who have engaged in deception, misinformation and disinformation when it comes to public health. Uh, uh, Donald Trump is saying that the uh, new Department of Health and Human Services under RFK's leadership will play a big role in helping to ensure that everybody will be protected from harmful chemicals, pollutants, pesticides, pharmaceutical products and additives that have contributed to the overwhelming health crisis in this country. Mr Kennedy, we are told, will restore these agencies to the traditions of gold standard scientific research. They will become beacons of transparency and they will end the chronic disease epidemic. So, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., a known vaccine sceptic, a known critic of things like fluoride in drinking water, uh, a known critic of America's big pharmaceutical uh, companies, of America's food producers, and a man who has flirted with a wide array of conspiracy theories over the last uh, several years, is now to take the helm at uh, the head of America's public health system. Uh, and I think throughout that public health system there will be tremendous anxiety about the president's appointment. It's also worth making the, case, the, the, the point here, Ian, that, you know, Republicans talk about reducing the size of government. I mean, Trump has appointed Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy to this entirely fictional uh, Department of Government efficiency with an uh, aim of reducing the size of government in people's lives. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., at the helm of the Department of Health and Human Services, is going dramatically to augment the role of government in people's lives. He's going to take away uh, the freedom of parents uh, to have their kids vaccinated in infancy. He's going to take away uh, the rights of people to have fluoride in their water. I mean, there are all sorts of areas where this runs completely counter to some of the other goals that Donald Trump has uh, elucidated uh, for his government. But this is where he's going with these appointments. It is what it says it was going to be on the tin. I mean, this is going to be the the most radical, the most unusual uh, experiment in American governance that any of us in our lifetimes have ever witnessed. And now it's going to be up to Republicans on Capitol Hill in the Senate and the House of Representatives to decide how much of a blank check they want to write Donald Trump. Is Are they going to confirm all of these people in the U.S. Senate? Are they going to say, OK, uh, Mr. President-elect, you want to appoint these people as recess appointments so they can avoid the confirmation process and they can sit doing these jobs for up to two years, go right ahead. Is that where we're heading? We simply do not know. And this isn't... You know, I mean, it's laughable to say it, but this isn't the most surprising appointment, is it? No. Because I would say Mark Gates, the Attorney-General, is, shall we say, a bit of an eye-opener. Do you want to explain why? 
Yes, so this is Matt Gates, uh, Matt congressman Gates, until last night from Florida, uh, who Donald Trump wants to, to um, send to head the Department of Justice. I mean, I, I was saying earlier today, there, there are very few moments in Washington where you now witness collective mirth shared by Democrats and Republicans alike. But one moment came yesterday when news broke that Matt Gates was being nominated uh, for the position of Attorney General. Number one, because... Everybody knows he has no qualifications for the job whatsoever, apart from the fact that before he was a congressman, he was a lawyer. I mean, literally, those are his only qualifications for the job. And secondly, because he is the most loathed Republican on Capitol Hill among Republicans. I mean, the most uh, absolutely enraging member of Congress for the other 434 members of the House of Representatives. But Donald Trump has lit upon him because if Donald Trump wants, as he says he does, to strip the Department of Justice of its traditional independence and to launch criminal probes of people that have done him wrong, as he sees it, He's going to need an entirely pliant Attorney General. And in Matt Gates, if he can get him into the post, he will certainly have that because Matt Gates himself, like Donald Trump, says that he is the victim of a weaponized Department of Justice lawfare targeted against him because there are probes of Mr. Gates's own personal conduct and indeed an ongoing investigation by the House Ethics Committee into allegations of of uh, improper behaviour uh, by Mr Gates with a young woman over allegations of campaign funds being diverted to private use by Mr Gates, uh, over allegations that he was watching pornography on the floor of the House of Representatives. And those are just the... the, the that's the beginning of the story. That's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is a man who has no chance on the face of it of being confirmed by by the Senate because uh, his critics would only have to remove three Republicans uh, and bring them over to the other side out of the equation. And I don't think that will be a particularly high bar for them uh, to meet. But it's perfectly possible he ends up at the Department of Justice running it as a recess appointment and then we'll have potentially two years to start doing Donald Trump's bidding and going after Donald Trump's enemies. And let me just be clear, if all this sounds like it is ripped from the pages of fiction, it is not. This is no longer a drill. This is Donald Trump, the president-elect, planning to do everything that he said he was going to do on the campaign trail, everything that he said he was going to do for the last three years, and it is going to play out here in plain sight, and it is going to test immediately the constitutional guardrails that exist in this country. He's picking people like Matt Gates and RFK Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard for the post of Director of National Intelligence because he's basically throwing down the gauntlet to Republicans on Capitol Hill and saying, how far are you going to let me go? I've got a mandate from the, from the country. I just won it last week. I want to get on and I want to do all the things that I told the country we were going to do. Who among you is going to stand up and try and stop me? And we don't yet know whether there are that many of them that will rise to the occasion and say, I am Spartacus. Well, enough with all of that. What do you think about the restriction the sale of fireworks? <laughs> Where, in the UK? Yeah. That's what well, we're talking about. Haven't, uh, you, haven't uh, you been uh, listening for the whole sorry. hour, honestly? <laughs> well, I was preparing. I was What's preparing like? for this. This doesn't just happen by accident, you know. <laughs> um... It's a very interesting question because, as you know, in the United States, there are incredibly tight restrictions on the sale of fireworks. There are some states where you can't buy them. You can't buy them here in the District of Columbia. You have to drive over the border into uh, Virginia or Maryland to buy them. Uh, they, are, they are treated here, and I'm, I have no sense myself of whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, but they're, they're almost uh, you know, locked away from people and treated like the... Almost like, I mean, it'd be easier to buy a gun, frankly, uh, in some parts of the country than it is to buy fireworks. Much easier to buy a gun in some parts of the country than it is to buy fireworks. Uh, although, you know, America obviously has a rich tradition of, of celebrating with fireworks. We'll be seeing that on July the 4th and seeing it uh, at the end of the year. Uh, do I, but as to whether it's a good idea, I, 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 there's certainly an illicit trade in them here. So that might be a downside risk.
An illicit trade in fireworks. That, that's something I hadn't actually co contemplated. Thank you very much indeed, Simon. That's Simon Marks, LBC's US correspondent, joining us live from Washington, D.C.